This is the 2017 Yamaha Aerox 155. My Yamaha Aerox 155. And it's got 27,794 kilometers on the odometer for one year and nine months. And I am gonna review it. Yamaha is a company that's been well known for their precision built musical instruments as well as world-class motorcycles, which they have been very competitive in. And now, the spirit of competitiveness has gone down to the small displacement bike segment. And one of their bikes to gain this level of competitiveness is the Yamaha Mio Aerox 155. It's got a 155cc power plant, liquid-cooled 4-valve single overhead cam, variable valve actuation or VVA. It's got a continuously variable transmission or CVD automatic, Power is about 15 horsepower at 8,000 RPM and max torque is about 13.8 newton meters at 6,200 RPM. Alright, so driving a 2017 Aerox 155, non ABS. Okay, so one thing I've noticed, guys, before palang pag uh, sa kaiko dito sa motor nito, is how much wide the seat is. Actually, it's really wide for me, no? So, coming from a motorcycle, that has a slimmer seat and harder one, I feel that this is a uh, very comfortable seat for me. Sa mga people that came from smaller displacement motorcycles with smaller seats, you're definitely gonna have a good time and a comfier time riding this bike. And uh, kahit na medyo it has a higher seat height pag umupo po kayo since the suspension is very soft parang ano po siya bumababa yung motor pag uh, nag uh, upo po kayo so it's it has a significant amount of lowered uh, height so it definitely helps sa mga medyo riders na may kakulangan ng konti sa height approaching my favorite spot here rotonda Okay, so the cornering po ng Aerox is uh, it has one of the most excellent performing uh, cornering abilities for a small displacement bike. Lalo na pag scooter, ha? before kasi I did not expect that this bike could corner that well. Well, on the right hands. Kasi syempre, it has one of the widest tires in its segment. It has a 110 by 80 tire on its front and 140 by 70 tires on the rear. So it's definitely got more grip. And syempre, magaan po siya. It's a light motorcycle. You're definitely gonna have a more or a significant amount of grip on the corners. I bought this not for me. Kasi wala talaga akong hiling sa scooters, underbone, and, and etc. Pero I bought this for my mother. I learned to love this bike. I learned to love it because of its uh, characteristics, of its handling, and etc. I never expected na mag-ride ako ng uh, scooter. And then yung availability ng parts, since it's Yamaha, you're, you're not gonna have a hard time. Kasi yung Yamaha, guys, there are so many parts available. Kahit na yung mga yung mga aftermarket ones, as in dami talaga. So, yun, you're not gonna have a uh, hard time looking for parts of this bike. Kahit ako, daming ano talaga, parts online. Kasi ayun, wala akong perang pang upgrade. <laughs> okay na ako dito sa fairings na blue. Kasi before, this is orange, guys. This is an orange one. So, I have, I've updated the RCR nito. So, it's not gonna be a problem. One thing I've noticed before, pag bili ko nito, is how soft the suspension is. Tapos yung rear suspension nito is sobrang liit talaga. And sa sobrang liit nun, pag uh, may back rider ako, yung uh, tire niya, the tire is nag ano po siya, it, nagdidikit po siya sa rear fender. So, after a uh, few weeks, I've ordered these uh, shocks from KYB, which is another uh, trusted brand, which uh, also Yamaha uses for other motorcycles. Yun, ano ko po siya, I've installed it on this one, so it fixed that problem. Pero, yung motor nito, this is one of the first generation. So, yung shock nito, yun yung po yung maliit. And yung second generation nito, 
medyo malaki na yung shock sa likod so wala na yung problema pero still I've heard some news na yung front shocks are still the same one of the bad factors ng shocks na ito is uh, obviously it's a scooter it's a scooter for the city so it's not gonna have a lot of travel sa suspension niya pero yung uh, progressiveness or yung stiffness ng shock niya is sobrang soft it's too soft in fact na madali siyang mag bottom out so yung uh, rubber damper niya pag nagbo bottom out yung shock yung tawag doon nila na may katok pero it could be easily fixed there are uh, aftermarket na rubber dampers na available uh, online tapos uh, they can uh, install it sa shock yung mga mechanics pwede po yan but I think Yamaha, Yamaha siguro they should address this uh, problem it's not a big issue it's, it's really not an issue pero uh, since this motorcycle is really good uh, sa lahat ng almost all in aspects siguro I think yun na lang yung bagay that needs to be improved on it could be dubbed as one of the most uh, parang malapit na siya sa perfect guys yung perfect motorcycle for everybody and then uh, I want to talk about the engine the engine on this one is really good because it's a 155cc single cylinder engine with four valves and single overhead camshaft pero pero guys pero merong pero kahit na single overhead cam siya po siya, it has DVA. DVA or which means uh, variable valve actuation. So yung variable valve actuation, it works like uh, there are secondary uh, cams on this one. So yung alam nyo naman, if you know how engine works, may valve po tayo. And those uh, intake valves and exhaust valves moves up and down. At lower RPM, syempre, you don't need that uh, much lift on the cam. There is a uh, substantial air that's coming in the air intake so pag higher rpm stand when the engine is required to breathe uh, better there is a second set of uh, cams na nag activate po pag nasa 5500 rpm na po tayo so 5500 rpm it uh, definitely activates the second set of cams para yung lift po ng uh, valves will be much higher so it's definitely a uh, leap forward sa small displacement bikes Okay, so yun yung mga factors na kinusider ko pag bili ko nito. I was really looking forward on how the engine works. Alright, so let's go to the city. <laughs> Alright, so that engine, this engine too is derived from the, uh, tawag ito, the Yamaha R15. So what I like about this one is it is one of the best and the most advanced engines in this uh, small displacement bike segment lalo na scooter naka VVA po siya or variable valve actuation kahit na yung R15 although yung R15 is a manual transmission so manual transmission po yung uh, R15 and this is a CVT1 pero the engine platform is still the same kasi reliable naman po siya and by the way guys this engine has a higher compression ratio compression ratio than normal 10 is to 5 is to 1 it's supposed to be hot pero hindi siya ganun kainit kasi liquid cooled that po siya it has a radiator on the right side of the engine so right side radiator and uh, ibig sabihin nun it can deliver more power and uh, more efficient cooling system and trust me guys you're not gonna find uh, on other brands you're not gonna find an engine this advanced on their smaller displacement bike so it's it's really a leap forward for Yamaha to be putting this kind of technology sa small displacement bikes nila so obviously one of the purposes non is definitely you're gonna have uh, more torque at lower RPMs which is uh, kailangan mo talaga pag uh, tawag dito arangka or acceleration and then at higher RPMs and higher speeds you're gonna you're definitely gonna need more power so more power is different from torque so it delivers more torque on the bottom end and more power on the higher rev so it's a best of uh, both worlds so, overtake tayo dito and what I like yon take that acceleration the acceleration on this bike for a scooter is definitely good so you're not gonna have a, a hard time passing uh, traffic excuse me
you're not gonna really have a hard time passing sa mga traffic unless nasa highway na po tayo which is medyo mabilis na yung mga ano na mga sasakyan so siguro doon magsastruggle po kayo pero sa tra traffic it's really convenient the acceleration is good it definitely has a decent amount of power obviously since it is a CVT or a continuously variable transmission uh, there will be a significant amount of power loss so power loss po siya sa drivetrain since uh, it's a scooter kasi syempre pag manual ka you have the engine the crankshaft is directly connected to the gears and the clutch where you're gonna control pag uh, if you're gonna release the uh, ay sorry dito po tayo dadad if you're gonna release the uh, clutch definitely nag engage po siya wala na pong slip so dito po sa CVT yung mechanism po niya it allows significant amount of slip para uh, to actuate po kasi syempre eh, uh, automatic po ito so it it's not that uh, efficient compared sa manual pero still still it has significant amount of acceleration and uh, power so yeah, which means na yung engine niya is really a strong one kahit na may power loss po siya ramdam mo po yung lakas So let's talk about brakes. The brakes on this one, actually, perfect as an eye. Other than the suspension, it has a disc brake on the front and uh, drum brakes and record. Pero yung pads niya, yung brake pads and brake shoe, parang pareho lang po siya sa Mio. And the single cylinder uh, caliper po siya on the front, which uh, means medyo mahina po yung brakes niya. One of the advantage no, yung mahina yung brakes niya, kasi for example, uh, ako naman, I'm really a light rider. So light in fact, na mas uh, pabor sa akin yung ganitong klaseng brakes, kasi even though wala itong ABS, kasi before, I, I really thought na may ABS ito. Hmm, rough road on this one. I really thought na mayroon siyang ABS, kasi yung brakes niya does not actuate uh, that uh, fast sa ano sa ganitong mga situation pero if you're a heavy rider kasi ako I'm uh, 56 kilograms ngayon 56 or 57 kilograms it's really an advantage for me so I don't really need uh, brakes that are that powerful so brakes that uh, brakes dito is one of the factors to consider yung mga Masi maraming nagre-reklamo po na bakit daw yung brakes nila is parang lutang or parang uh, I am really pushing the brakes so hard wala po siyang ano hindi po siya gumagana sabi nila what's wrong with my Aerox well other than uh, it could be a dirty brake pad or a dirty brake shoe pero talaga siya guys so yung remedyo dito I've seen some uh, guys that converted their uh, drum brakes sa likod into disc brakes so that will be a significant amount of uh, improvement sa uh, brakes and furthermore yung sa front naman natin para sa medyo nagtitipid or hindi masyadong not willing to spend that much may mga brake pad po tayo na uh, makumaga if the adhesion on the brake pads is really much more compared sa other brake pads so may mga may mga nagbebenta po na nakikita po ako dun sa uh, Aerox ng by Ansel Page na meron po silang mga ano mga brake pads that can definitely fix this pero for me ah for me it's just me I really like this uh, brake pads kasi uh, magaan ako kahit I'm, I'm gonna slam the brakes really hard it does not usually skid if pavement lang hmm I'm gonna try to have a demo for example 70 7 uh, yun 80 kph 80 brakes hard so ah uh, yeah see that guys that's <laughs> that's really a short uh, braking period kasi hindi masyadong makapit it doesn't lock up the wheel so parang may ABS na din siya <laughs> pero if you're gonna be a heavy rider I think you're really gonna have a hard time stopping this Let's talk about fuel consumption. So fuel consumption on this bike, it's really uh, controversial kasi marami nagre-reklamo bakit daw pagastos yung Aerox nila. Which is kind of true in some sense and uh, there's some truth behind it. 
Okay, factor number one. If you're gonna use the bike on uh, city drives and medyo, medyo slow lang po yung patakbo natin, kung gusto mo makatipid tayo, try not hitting 5,500 RPM. Kasi pag nag-activate yung VVA and it uh, opens the valves, it definitely uses more gas. Kasi more air is in. If there is more air in, the ECU adjusts fuel injectors to pump more fuel in. I really got a high of a... Uh, 35 GPL So as uh, pinakamatipid ko is 35 GPL And uh, pinaka lowest ko I think is nasa 22 to 25 GPL Yes 22 to 25 KPL po. Bakit? One time po nag-ride kami. Uh, di syempre, may mga big bike po tayo nakasama. Mabilis sila. I tried to keep up. So the bike, most of the time, was on full throttle mode. So full throttle mode, nasa 8,500 RPM po yung revolution ng engine natin. So 8,500 RPM and the variable valve actuation or the VVA is activated. Syempre po, it's gonna have, it's gonna consume more fuel it consumes more fuel in fact na i think mas matipid pa kung i used my duke 390 sa mga high speed long rides pero if sa mga normal long rides if hindi po masyadong walwala not really that full throttle okay po it's it's it has a significant amount of uh, fuel consumption okay lang po siya so sa mga nagre-reklamo po yun po yung uh, factor and another factor is check your tire pressure guys so tire pressure really affects fuel consumption kasi tire pressure na mahina is equivalent to more rolling resistance people are asking me how do you manage to ride this bike off-road siguro I, one thing I can tell them is kaya ng motor kaya ng motor eh, pero it really just bottom out the suspension really just bottom out more frequently and uh, you gotta have minor adjustments as a rider if you po kayo mag trail for example uh, tayo, tayo po tayo para yung arms and legs po natin will act as added suspension po sa ating uh, off-road experience so the motorcycle or the aerox will not experience more bumps than ever but if you ask me if it's a capable motorcycle off-road yes po it is it is very capable Alright, so we got the bike here. So, yung size niya po is, as you know, yung Aerox medyo, medyo malaki nga siya sa other scooters with smaller displacements. So, yung una ko po siya nakita, as I said, sabi ko, wow, ang laki niya, ang ganda tingnan. So, yeah, so here are the fairings. By the way, guys, these fairings are not stock. I just installed these ones nung uh, new pa siya. These are uh, Thai uh, fairings. I ordered it online. And uh, nung expire na po yung ano niya, yung uh, registration niya, we renewed it and changed the color so there are no uh, legal implications on that thing right, so the fairings are kind of big kasi yan ipitikin mo po siya medyo it's kind of hollow yan medyo hollow siya pero it's of uh, good quality na din yung fairings niya suspension obviously yung liquid boto this is not stock anymore by the way guys these are KYB suspensions or Kayaba suspensions. I changed the suspension before because this is one of the first generation na Aeroxes which is maliit po yung suspension. So before, nung maliit po yung suspension niya, medyo madali po siya mag-bottom out and believe it or not, this rear tire, kapag may angkas po ako, nagsasagi po siya dito ng area na ito. So by change it, KYB for more stiffer ones and so front I did not change the suspension so I find the suspension very plush but at the same time very uh, soft so very soft in fact na madali po siyang mag bottom out and yung rubber damper niya pa is not that enough so I think Yamaha should uh, change that thing or uh, adjust it update it with uh, more stiffer springs and it is liquid cooled this is the radiator of the bike. The exhaust on this one, of course, it's kind of big. The big exhaust doesn't look quite, uh, that good. Pero, you have to comply with the emission standards, so you're for compliance. So they have to make it that big. So if you want to change this, the exhaust on this one, marami pa tayong uh, aftermarket na exhaust available. Pero don't change it to uh, open pipe, guys. Ha? Yung mga masyadong maingay dyan. 
take note, HPG and LTO are gonna after you. There are aftermarket pipes naman dyan na medyo good quality and may silencer po na hindi po nakakairita yung sound. So, if mag-change kayo ng, ano nyo, ng exhaust nyo, might as well go and find those things. This is how you start the bike. Put the keys in there. Switch it on. And uh, by the way, these are on center stand kasi hindi siya mag-start if naka-on yung side stand which is another safety feature of Yamaha. Like for example, start mo siya, press on the brakes, yeah, it does not start. Natin yun. Yawn! Alright. So this is the dash on this one. We got a uh, RPM meter, fuel gauge, and the speed, clock, and the odometer, alright? Yeah, and it's about 27,795, alright? So, one kilometer away. Kasi <laughs> review tayo kanina, 94 pa lang yan. So, we got one button to worry about. This, alright, chip meter, chip one, average fuel economy. Batteries, yeah, so 14 volts po siya kasi kumandar. Pero pag na-notice nyo, if we're gonna switch off the motorcycle, Sorry. Yeah, the battery, nya, battery voltage drops to eh? 13 volts or something. Because it's not the yung rectifier nya or something. Yeah, doesn't give it the supply, right? So one of the good things about this Aerox is dito po. Yeah, what I this is my favorite feature. This has a charge port. Yeah, so it's a DC charging port, so you can hook. A uh, car charger in there and put your phone in there if you're going to have a ride. So, pag you ride po kayo, you can charge your phone in there. So, very convenient and very uh, uh, good design. So, kasi yung mga ibang mga bikes, it's an aftermarket uh, option pa din. And then, wala po tayo ng ano, walang storage for your phone. So, this is a good thing that they integrated into this bike. I like that. And then, before ito po, this is how you open your fuel door. Yeah. Fuel. Yeah. Fuel tank is about 4.2 to 4.6 liters. Yeah. And this is how to open the rear or the compartment. Yeah. The seat compartment. Click it. And. And. Ang laki nyo. It's about 42 liters. Yung. So, uh, so what do we got here? We got a cloth. VS1. A comb. We got a centipede in there. Manual, 4CR, tools, oh. We got rice in there. We got rice in the U-Box, right? <laughs> so that's about it. Top speed? In the real world, where there is a lot of wind resistance and other environmental factors to consider, I got about 113 to 115 kilometers an hour with me weighing in at 56 kilograms without my gears. But take note, this is almost a 2-year-old motorcycle, which I haven't replaced any wear and tear parts except the tires and brake pads. Which in theory, could mean that there could be a lot of rolling resistance to the worn down parts like bearings and belts. And now, you can just imagine how many bearings and moving parts this bike has as it could be a variable in a lowered top speed compared to a new one. And of course, depending on the road and environmental conditions when I was testing the bike. Alright, so talking about ergonomics and especially seat height, kasi pa maraming taong nagsasabi na, Oy, yung Aerox malaki siya, yung seat height mataas, baka hindi ko po kaya. Alright, so I'm about 5'2 in height, specifically 5'2 and a half. And uh, this is what I look like pag sumakay ako dito. Right. So, ito po, my, my left foot is on the motorcycle and your right foot ko po is uh, on the ground. So, flat foot po tayo. And if I will put both feet on the ground, this is what it looks like. Ayan. So, for people, for short people like me, you don't have to worry. Lalo na if uh, medyo flexible kayo. Pero if medyo hindi kayo flexible, siguro you have things to worry about. Pero it's very light. But if you're gonna sway it around like this, I think kahit medyo shorter ka pa, it's not gonna be a problem. Right, so what do I think about the bike? I think uh, definitely it's one of the game changers in the small displacement scooter segment. Kasi Yamaha, 
they have been really aggressive sa pagpapalabas nila ng small displacement scooters as of this moment and small displacement bikes nila. So definitely, it's really a game changer and it has become a trend sa lahat ng uh, manufacturers to follow their footsteps in projecting the future of uh, small displacement bikes in our market. So in terms of practicality, reliability, uh, size, and definitely forma, you've got it all on this bike. Overall conclusion about the bike, I think this is one of the best bikes in the segment considering that this is the bike that has the most power out of the others in the segment. More power, reliable, and siyempre, pogi na din siya. So, I think this is one of the bikes that is fast leading in terms of uh, sa lahat ng aspects niya. Alright, so who is this bike for? I think this bike is for everybody. To the sense na, ako maliit ako, I'm really 5 to in height, pero kaya-kaya ko siya dahil kasi even though hindi siya ganun kababa yung seat height niya, it's really light for a slightly big scooter. And yung wheelbase is uh, not that long, it's really short, para it's gonna be maneuverable. Now, I've also seen women drive these things, no? Kasi it's very easy to drive. Kasi it gives them a sense of empowerment that they really belong in the motorcycle community. And it's practical too. So practical in fact na it has a 42 liter in a U box. 42 liters of space for the groceries to be put in. So, I've also seen families drive on these things. And, uh, kahit yung mga marilaki rider friends natin dyan, they also like to uh, have this, this bike, no? Kasi it has a decent power. It's really capable in the twisties for the sense of uh, handling that it does. It's a really a versatile bike. So, so versatile in fact na yung market na it's really widespread. So, I think this bike is for everybody. For the non-ABS version, it ranges from 97,000 to 101,000 pesos, depending on the dealer and what part of the world you're in. At this price point, it's definitely not a cheap option. But when you get a sense of this bike specs, technology, and what it's really capable of, it starts to make sense from a consumer's perspective. Alrighty, that is a wrap. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome motorcycle content. This is Jan Spaceship, and I'll see you on the next one.